this weekend I met a gentleman that was here in, in Akron from Paris that was doing some work for one of the companies. I found, although he spoke English, I found him very difficult to understand. But he did IT work, and I imagine that they all speak kind of the same language in IT. So, <laughs> right. you know, he could probably do just fine in speaking IT. You have scientists all over the world. Do they speak the same scientific language? In English is the language of the conferences. And so uh, sometimes it's not very understandable because they don't speak their accent is heavier, they don't speak English very well, but their papers are all written in English. And um, I have I think for a lay person, I understand as much as I possibly can about the work that they're doing. So I get the overview or the picture. And so when they get up to speak, you have to kind of sometimes wait for the conclusion because that's where you get the key. But they're brilliant. Moms. Well, I was going to say, aside from understanding their accent, are they talking about things on a whole different plane? Yes. Than what we can understand. Yes. Uh, I went to a lecture in Cleveland a few years ago by uh, Dr. Stanley Prusner, who won the Nobel Prize for uh, identifying the word prion or protein to find mm -hmm. the way that this disease uh, replicates, and he started speaking perfect English. I totally understood him. He's from California. Midway through, I realized, I don't know what this man is talking about. <laughs> I can understand him, but I don't know what he's talking no. about. At the conclusion, I sort of got it. it he pulled it together, but it is. It's, it's a very complicated uh, scientific pr process. So, as I said in the introduction, we've, we've heard the word mad cow, but I don't think right. that most of us have heard crutchfield Jakob disease very, very often. What would you want someone out there that may be hearing that for the first time, what would you want them to know about this disease? Well, first of all, um, mad cow disease, as you said, happens in cows. This is not the disease that happens in animals. Um, unfortunately, there's also another disease, chronic wasting disease, which is we're watching to hope that doesn't mutate. That's a disease of deer and elk. But it was shocking to find that this disease could cross the species barrier, which is what had happened in the UK. They didn't recognize it and where it was coming from, and they were feeding it to school children in their lunches. So the horror of what happened to children and then some adults, it was, we've had five cases where it was passed through blood, through contaminated blood, pr before the patients were symptomatic. So knowing that this is fatal, knowing that once this happens, there's no stopping it. The horror of this disease kind of stops everyone in their tracks and they hear mad cow. I find as a patient family advocate, sometimes I even have to make that analogy because when I say Kreisfeld Jakob disease, it sounds like you know something that just doesn't relate to anything anyone would ever know. Now, before we go down your, your personal journey. You're a foundation. There isn't a cure right now. So you exist to give information. Is that correct? That, that, that what, what you can, you know, your kind of currency with, with people that are touched in some way is information. So it, is that why you exist the most, to be able to give information to people that are searching for answers? Another really good question. Basically, yes, that's the bottom line. But it's very difficult to get, once you've had a diagnosis, usually across the board, neurologists can do nothing, doctors can do nothing. So as human beings, they kind of step back and families don't know what to do. They're, they're twisting in the wind. And the only way that you can categorically uh, diagnose this disease is sadly through autopsy, brain tissue. It's brain only. And so part of the sad job that we have is to explain this to families. And I have to tell you, I've been doing this for a lot of years. I think we're sensitive enough to be able to sense when a family's ready to hear that. And it's important that they know that this is an option. They don't have to take it. There's no right or wrong decision. But once a patient has passed away, that's your, your opportunity to know the answers. To, to really know. Is gone. So that's so, part of our job. 